This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And these are the type of tutorials that I really, really like. One where we can take what might seem to be, I'm not going to say an ordinary looking shot, but still a very great looking shot. This is a shot from Artbeats. I want to thank them for providing the footage for the use in this tutorial. And what I decided to do with this one was to take it and spice it up a little bit by adding this very cool lens flare effect to it. Now, it might seem like it's a fairly straightforward effect to create, except for one major stumbling block. You can see that what I've actually done is I've gone in and I've put this lens flare on top of that light that's on top of that building. And as you can see, this is quite a moving shot. There's lots of movement happening in it. And to be honest, this isn't something that I want to get in and do frame by frame. I want to get in and do some motion tracking with it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can do all of this work inside of BCC 10 apply the lens flare and have it match onto that light exactly so you would think that it was there when this footage was shot. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And you can see that shot that I showed you in the introduction. Again, an awesome shot, courtesy of Artbeats. And what we're going for here, I'm just going to zoom in here, and you can actually see that if I zoom in, I'm going to hold Command or Option, Control and Alt on Windows to pan around once I've zoomed in on a specific part of the frame. This is what we want to get in and track. This is what we're going to be adding the lens flare to. And I'm not going to say that it's going to be a relatively easy track, but if I just zoom back again a little bit, you'll see that it's a bit of an arcing and sweeping motion. We even got a bit of a rotation on the building too, a little bit of a speed up there as well. So this is not going to be an easy track. And if this was something that I had to get in and do manually, it would take quite a while. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Now, the first thing that I had to do was to come up with the lens flare look. Now I'm just going to come into the effects palette, command or control in 8, and I'm going to type in lens flare 3D. Okay, let's take the lens flare 3D from the BCC lights category. I'm just going to drag that, drop that onto my shot here. And again, I created a lens flare to sort of match the look of what I thought a lens flare coming from that light would look like. Now, I got in, I created the look that I wanted inside of the effect itself, and then what I did, because I realized I might want to keep this cool looking flare, is that if I come to the FX browser, I actually saved it as a preset. And I know which preset I saved it as. I saved it as building lighting flare right here. There it is. You'll see red to match the color of that light. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply this. Now, what the next step in this process is going to be is to track that light. The only problem that I have is that if I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the lens flare 3D effect, I don't have access to the motion tracker parameter inside of lens flare 3D, and I also don't have access to Mocha, meaning inside of the pixel chooser. Now, technically, I do have access to the motion tracker parameter. I'm just not using the right version of the effect, but I'm going to be honest with you. Why would I want to use that when I have Mocha at my disposal inside of BCC 10? So the first thing we're going to need to do is get the information from our track to get it into the motion tracker version of this effect. So what we're going to do is just pick any effect. It doesn't matter. Let's actually remove this lens flare for right now. Okay. And let's head into, I'm just going to head into the blur category of BCC. And let's pick a blur look here. Let's go with, why don't we just go with fast lens blur. I'm just going to take that, drag it and drop it down onto our shot. Now keep in mind, doesn't matter which effect that we use as long as it has the pixel chooser parameter uh, in it for us to have access to. Now, to use Mocha, I need to make sure that my timeline is set to best quality. 
I'm going to step into effects mode and we want to head right down to the bottom of the effect to the pixel chooser. In this case, you'll see slash mocha off. Now, we don't really care what's going to happen with the information once we're done with it because we're going to export it to the desktop. Okay, now that's another really cool feature inside of Mocha for uh, AVX Mocha BCC that I'm going to show you in just a second. I'm just going to launch Mocha. Okay, now we know what we want to track. Now, one thing that you should know about Mocha and how it works and how I always like to work with it is I have my one hand on the mouse, my right hand on the mouse, and then I have my left hand on the Z key, my middle finger, and then my index finger is on the X key. Now, why would I have those keys? specifically targeted. Well, Z represents zoom. You'll see I'm just moving the mouse back and forward. And once I zoom in, X is to pan. Okay. So these two keys are keys that I use all the time. Okay. So we're now going to need to get in and choose a region for us to track. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to head right up to the top here. And I'm going to grab the X spline tool. And I'm just going to draw a little shape around the light. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the only parameter that I'm tracking is the position parameter. I don't need to worry about rotation or anything like that. We just need to worry that our, uh, our plan, our surface is going to be right here, right dead in the middle of this light. And we're only worrying about its position and nothing else. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off shear. I'm going to turn off rotation. I'm going to turn off scale and only leave translation. Now, to be honest, 90% of pixels tracked is a little bit too much. So we're going to put that down at about, let's put it maybe at 45. Okay. Now, once we have our minimum percentage of pixels used at 45 and we're only tracking translation, I'm pretty much ready to track this. I'm just going to zoom back. Now, what's also important to keep in mind, I'm just going to jump down a little bit here. You'll notice that our flare disappears from the screen. Now, to be honest, once it does that, I really don't care about the tracking information because at that point, the lens flare is going to disappear anyways. Okay. What I'm going to do is head right back to the beginning and I'm simply going to come over and I'm going to say track. Now, Mocha is going to take a second because remember, it's basically accessing the footage. It's kind of direct linking to it in my timeline. And you can see basically by the, the range that I've set up here, the region that I've set up here, this track is pretty much dead on. Okay. Now you'll see as soon as it disappears from the screen, it actually didn't stop the track. It kept going. But remember, we're going to make that flare disappear at that point. Now, what we also want to do here is I'm just going to zoom all the way in. Okay. I'm just going to turn my planar surface on right here in the top toolbar. And we're just going to make sure that with the planar surface, I'm just going to reposition it here, that that little crosshairs is sitting right in the middle of the flare itself. Okay. So let's get this set up here. And it's a little bit tricky to see here. There we go, because we've got all the blues happening here. Let's just get this set up and as close to being in the middle as we possibly can. Okay, there we go. That's looking pretty good. So this way, and of course, this element moves pretty darn quick, but you'll see we're pretty much locked dead into the middle of that light. Okay. Now, I did say that we were going to export the tracking data. Now, this is actually something that's very cool and a little bit of a common misconception about Mocha BCC and that you cannot export tracking information from Mocha BCC because one of the huge, powerful features inside of Mocha Pro, obviously, besides its unbelievable tracking capabilities, is just the staggering amount of NLEs, compositing applications that you can export your tracking data to. But for us, since we're working in BCC, all we care about is exporting this information for BCC. So when we come down to our export tracking data, you'll see that we have two options. I have the BCC center point, which is what we were just setting up for now, and BCC corner pin. Now for us, we only care about the center point because we're going to be locking this flare onto that center point during the track. Okay, so we're going to export the center point information. I'm going to say save and I'm going to save it to the desktop. We'll call this uh, BCC center point track. Okay, and I can close this out. Now, it doesn't matter if I save this. I don't need to save it because I've just sent that tracking information to the desktop. Okay, now I'm just going to come back into Media Composer and let's now get this set up. What we're going to do is we're going to remove this effect. F5 is my shortcut to remove effect. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always find it right here. And let's head back to Lens Flare 3D. Okay, I'm just going to back up a little bit and type in 3D, not 35, 3D. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Now, we're not going to go to the real-time version of this effect 
because remember, we don't have access to either Mocha or the motion tracker parameter. What we want to use is the non real time lens flare 3D with MT motion tracker. Okay, we're going to take this effect and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto our shot. Now you'll see it's a blue dot effect. You'll see the lens flare appear immediately. And of course, what we're going to do is drop down the preset drop down and we're going to head to our building lighting flare. I'm going to select it. There's our lens flare. Now we need to get in and tell it to utilize that tracking information for our lens flare. I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom to the motion tracker parameter right down at the bottom. I'm going to twirl that down. I'm just going to head down a little bit here. And I'm going to come up to the tracker data. You'll see it says import export. And I'm going to load this tracker information. Okay, let's head to the desktop. Let's select the BCC center point track. I'm now going to say open. And as soon as I do, you're going to notice a motion path appear on the screen. Except for one problem. We can see that it actually seems to be doing the track. Okay, I can zoom in a little bit here. And let's just reposition this. There is what we're going to be tracking. You'll see it looks like it's pretty much locked dead on. The only problem that we have is that the flare is not actually applied to that tracking information. Well, the reason it's not applied is that if I come down a little bit further here, you'll see that if I come down to the apply option, right now it's set to none. What I'm going to do is switch that to be the light source. And as soon as I do, you'll notice that the lens flare immediately jumps over to the center point of that track. Now, I do have another little problem here, which is I still have the motion paths visible on the screen. So we're just going to come up. We're going to turn them off right there. What I'm now going to do is just step out of that effect. And you'll now see that if I drag through, that lens flare is absolutely locked onto that light. Now, you'll notice that what I, I love this as, is as the lens flare gets close to the edge of the frame, much like it would in real life, in a real world lens flare situation, the flare starts to flare out. But the problem is, remember, when we tracked it, the flare didn't actually leave the screen. So before I render this, we're going to want to make sure that we set that up to disappear as soon as we disappear from the edge of the frame. Okay, so I'm just going to step back into effects mode and I'm just going to bypass the effect because sometimes it's easier just to work by bypassing the actual effect itself. Okay. And you'll see that there is our lens flare getting ready to disappear. And all we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're on the right frame, which we are. And we're going to come to our global intensity. I'm going to right click. We're going to add a keyframe. We're going to move down one frame. And in that one frame, we're going to add another keyframe and set the global intensity down at zero. Now, of course, I should turn off bypass effect. You'll now see that we can come back. And let's render this. This clip is about just a little bit short of nine seconds. So I'm curious to see how long it says it's going to take to render it. Looks like it's going to take about 15 seconds, which to be honest, for a non real time effect inside a media composer that's accessing the external data from the motion tracker to really power this animation. This is actually very cool. And you know what? And I'm 100% not surprised at how fast that render was very, very quick. Okay. And now guess what? We can now simply come in and hit play. And that lens flare is absolutely locked onto that light. And this effect looks really cool, especially when it gets to the edge and boom, it's gone. Just like the way it would be in a real world situation. So I hope this tutorial has taught you a few things. One, what a very cool effect lens flare 3D is and how with a lot of the effects inside of BCC, you always need to pay attention to those extra bells and whistles, those extra parameters that are attached to all of the effects. And if for some reason you can't find a parameter like motion tracker inside of an effect, chances are there's going to be an alternate effect that includes a motion tracker version. It might not be real time, but it's definitely going to accomplish what you want. And I hope you also see how flexible Mocha BCC is and how you can get in track specific shots, export that data to then take and bring in and use on other effects. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. 
And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library. Again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.